This clay tablet is the print of a seal about 4,500 years old. It depicts the scene of the god Enlil granting to mankind the plough, the beginning of modern agriculture. But very interestingly, we see at the top here, as the background of the cylinder seal, a depiction of the complete solar system, with the sun in the centre, and all of the planets we know of in their correct order, with their correct sizes. Plus, one more planet, which is still unknown to modern science, but is being actively searched for, because it does exist as astronomers now concur with ancient knowledge. The heavens bespeak the glory of the Lord, and the vault of heaven reveals his handiwork. In August 1977, the American space probe Voyager 2 left Cape Canaveral on a journey that would eventually take it, several years later, to the vicinity of our solar system's outermost planets. What Voyager discovered once it arrived there fully corroborates ancient knowledge. Oh my God! For the first time, man is actually seeing Uranus. And it is exactly as the Sumerians had described it 6,000 years ago. Yes, no doubt. Though they had no telescopes, the Sumerians did describe Uranus as Marsh Sig, meaning bright greenish. The Sumerians also explained why Uranus is tilted. Uranus took an almighty bang early on. A collision with something the size of Earth, traveling at 40,000 miles per hour, could have done it. What a strange feature. Is it artificial? Was someone there? on distant Miranda in the past. The Sumerians called Uranus planet which is the twin, the twin of Neptune that is. Were they right? Now we can confirm the Sumerian description of Neptune as a blue-green planet. Obviously the Sumerians must have known. Is it possible that mankind is only just catching up with ancient knowledge? That the Sumerians were particularly at home with astronomy is evidenced by the fact that they had known, named and listed all of the planets we know today, including those we ourselves rediscovered only in the past couple of centuries. Nudimud, the artful creator, Anu, he of the heavens. Anshar, foremost of the heavens. Kishar, foremost of firm lands. Rakish, the hammered bracelet. Lachmu, their god of war. Ki, the seventh planet. We call it Earth. The seventh planet, the sacred number seven, seven days in the week, seven days of Genesis, seven tablets of creation. Sumerian cosmogony answers many puzzles that still baffle modern science. Central to it was the tale of a celestial collision and knowledge of a solar system with 12 members. That ancient knowledge included the planets Uranus and Neptune, supposedly unknown until discovered 
1781 and 1846, and even Pluto, not discovered until 1930. But most surprising was the inclusion of one more large planet as the 12th member of our solar system. The story of this planet, as told by the Sumerians on their seven tablets of creation, begins four billion years ago, when our solar system was much younger and our own planet Earth did not yet exist. Out of deep space, there appeared an intruder called Nibiru. Drawn into the center of our solar system, passing by Neptune and Uranus and Saturn, and Jupiter, it faced an olden planet called Tiamat. When Nibiru, travelling clockwise, came close to Tiamat, which was travelling counterclockwise, its satellite struck Tiamat and cracked it. In a series of collisions, one half of Tiamat was smashed completely into bits and pieces. It became the comets and became what the Bible and the Sumerian epic called the firmament, what we call the asteroid belt. The other half, what we now call Earth, was thrust into a new orbital position. It carried along Tiamat's main satellite, which became our moon. Nibiru itself was caught into a permanent clockwise orbit around our sun, returning to our neighbourhood once in every 3,600 years and forever becoming the tenth planet of our solar system. This tale of creation echoed through all the ancient cultures, becoming part of the scientific knowledge that we find in the Old Testament in the creation story of Genesis. Modern astronomy and recent discoveries corroborate this millennia-old tale.